Hi, my name is John Etherton. I'm an engineer at Trackvia, and today I'm going to talk about setting up a Zap to use the Zapier platform to connect Trackvia to an email client, specifically Gmail. Our use case is going to be setting up a contact management table so that any person that's ever emailed you, you'll get their information in Trackvia. This could be a useful scenario for people in marketing or sales or any customer facing role at their company. Um, so to start with, I've already created a table in Trackvia. Um, I'm going to record the name, email address, the date of the first contact with that person, um, the first subject in the email address so I can have some context and then I'll have a notes field that I can fill in manually with anything I want to remember about my contact. So next, you'll want to get started in Zapier. Now I'm going to assume you've already signed into Zapier and have created an account. So the very first thing you'll see once you've done all that is the Zapier dashboard, which is what we have here on the screen. And so I'm just going to create a new Zap. And to do that, I'll click on the Make a New Zap button here. And this brings up the Zap wizard. So the first thing you're going to do is choose the app which will trigger your Zap. And we're going to use, like I said before, Gmail as the trigger. So anytime we get an email from someone, although in this case, we're going to get a little fancy down here where it says show all triggers. If you click that, it'll show some extra things that aren't necessarily shown to everyone. And you see this new unique sender. So this will trigger every time you get an email from someone you haven't received an email before, which is really nice because you don't want to add a new contact every time someone sends you a new email, especially for people you're in contact with often. Now we choose the Actions app, and that will be Track Via. And we're just going to add a record to our view. All right, so next we'll continue on. So in this step, we have to connect Zapier to our Gmail account. You do that by clicking on the red button here. It'll ask you to name the account. I'm just going to leave the default name and continue on. And this pops up a window from Gmail asking if you want to authorize Zapier to use this account. And I do. So I'm going to click Allow Access. Okay, and you can see here this green text on the side shows that it's working. So we'll continue on. Now we're going to do the same thing with Trackvia to authorize Zapier to have access to my account. I, again, will just use the default name. So now I'll enter in my Trackvia information. This will sign me in. Okay, so now that I've logged into Trackvia, it's going to prompt me to authorize Zapier, and I'm going to do that clicking Authorize. So once again, Zapier has connected to Trackvia and the account is working. So now we can get into the fun part of building our Zap. The first step is going to be to configure the trigger for Gmail. And Gmail is going to want to know exactly which one of your inboxes or mailboxes do you want to get notifications when you have a new unique sender. So we use this drop-down box here. And I'm going to just use my inbox since that's the one I use most frequently. Um, you have the option to add a custom filter. I'm not going to do that just because I want to receive all the emails I get. Now we have to choose which view we want to add things to in Trackvia. So if you click this drop down, it will show you a list of all the views you have access to. And here is the default contacts view. So I'm just going to use that. And once you choose the view, it then knows the fields you have access to in that view and, and we'll show you all the fields and now you can map the fields in Gmail to the fields you have in your track via view. So for the name of my contact, I'm going to click on this insert Gmail fields button and I'm going to use the from name. And for email address, I'm going to use email address from address. You can see here that it already has some sample data populated next to the names of these Fields, this is information that is pulled from my email account from previous emails that I've already received. So I'm going to choose the date for the date of first contact. First subject line is just going to be the subject line. And notes, I'm going to leave that blank because I'm going to fill that in myself as I have notes about my contacts. So I'll click continue again. 
Now we can test the zap. So I'll click on the button here. And what it's done is it's gone into my Gmail account and pulled out sample emails from people that I've received emails from. And it shows you what Gmail is going to send in when you click on the Gmail link here. And it shows you what track via is going to receive. This is a good way to just make sure that you've um, mapped everything the way you want, that name is an appropriate name, email address is indeed an email address, um, the subject is a subject, and so on. And now we can come over here and click Test Zap with this sample. And what that's going to do is actually send that data from Gmail to Trackvia. As you can see, it just changed to say success. And if I come back to my Trackvia application, if I refresh the screen, there you go, Matthew Green, today, read demo. And that is the same thing I was looking at here, Matthew Green, read demo. So my zap is working. Now I can continue on to the final step where I name my zap. So I gave it a name and I just click turn on to turn it on. And there you go. Okay, so now I've created my zap. I went into my personal email account and sent myself a couple test emails right here. And as you can see by looking at the zap, we have two showing up for those two sent emails. And if we look in our track via application, refresh the table, there they are. Two emails I sent to myself from different email addresses. Seems to be working just fine. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about before we go is that if you have any trouble with your Zap, you want to check this task history down here at the bottom. It will show you what all has happened. And if there's any error with it, you can just click on the task that failed. If you get anything other than a green circle for success, either a red X or a gray dash, you can come down here and click on the details and see exactly what was sent from the trigger application and then what was received by the application that does the action. Um, in this case, everything worked just fine, so there's nothing really to look at. But And if you have any trouble with your Zap, you can look at the Track Via Knowledge Base or reach out to our support team. And I've also written a blog post about setting up Zapier, and you can find a link to that below this video. Thanks a lot.